Hi, it's Ann. Thanks for stopping by. We're going to be making fabric tape today, and I'm so excited. So I have all kinds of different uh, uh, fabrics out, but I'm going to show you what started uh, this whole obsession with me. This is actually all I have left um, from what my dear, wonderful friend Connie, who lives in Tennessee, what she sent me last fall. She sent me a, a, a wonderful batch of this for my birthday in September, and I just... I, I use it so much. You can use this fabric tape anywhere that you would use washi, but it's just different. For one, you get to choose uh, from your own stash of uh, of fabrics or uh, fabrics that you... <laughs> you can ask your quilting friends if you're not a quilter or a sewer. Anybody you know who does a little bit of quilting is going to have uh, uh, fabrics uh, like these, and they will be they will happily, happily provide them for you. I, I just thought it was just a great idea. There's just something about having that texture uh, that, that looks great in a junk journal. So we're going to make some fabric tape and then we're gonna see where we can apply it. So I'm gonna set Connie's aside here and let's walk through the steps. The first thing that you need is, um, besides your fabric, so I guess second thing you'd need, is some double-sided tape. I have, the only kind of double-sided tape that I had had before was this little quarter-inch stuff, and I had this as a card maker because occasionally I use double-sided tape uh, to adhere a, a paper together, particularly if I don't want any warping or wrinkling. I don't use it a lot, but I use it sometimes. Well, what Connie advised was getting wider stuff, and she actually used a brand called Ultimate Crafts Die Cut and Mond. And hers is uh, four and three quarters inches wide, which is a lot wider than this. And each roll was about $26. I didn't want to invest quite that much, and so I found this brand called AJ Sign World. And I don't know if you can kind of see sign world in there. That's quite a claim, isn't it? A world of signs. Anyway, this is a double-sided tape um, that um, the, this is two inches wide, but you can get it in much wider uh, widths. And, but I, two, two inches was going to be fine for me for what I wanted to experiment with. And as you can see, I think this is going to last me a while. So anyway, AJ Sign World provided uh, this via Amazon to me for a mere $13.80. Might vary from day to day. You know how Amazon goes. But I wanted to let you know that if you do purchase some double-sided tape. It, it's a little bit of an investment. For me, it's worth it because I, I just don't think I'm ever going to need any more than this. And I love having um, something that I can use on two-inch strips of fabric because y your littlest of scraps uh, can certainly work for this. Let's, let, let me show you how easy it is. It is so easy. This is actually a terrible as in, not terrible like, ah, that's terrible. Terrible uh, as in, it's easy to tear um, tape. And I'm, why don't we just use these cherries first? Now I'm gonna be sharing with you several tips from Connie, who one of the first things she told us is, um, be sure and iron your fabric. I know junk journalers don't really like to iron things, but uh, yeah, yeah, we should with this because you want your fabric to be nice and flat. This happens to be quilting cotton. It's been in my stash forever. But you know, if you don't have quilting cotton and you don't have friends nearby who can provide that for you out of their own stashes, you know, maybe you've got an old pillowcase. Maybe you've got an old dishcloth. Okay, here is the terrible. Oh, it's terrible. Look how terrible that is. Huh. Um, maybe you can go in, you know, get an old dishcloth or, you know, just, you know, an old shirt or something where you can just cut a strip of fabric. I'm going to try to get over this so that I can adhere this down. This is so ridiculously easy. I'm not even going to call this a tutorial because you don't need a tutorial to do something truly as mindless as this. Pulled it off the roll and I smoothed that down. And Connie also, after making certain that your fabric is nice and ironed, she also recommends using your smoother, a hotel card, 
an old credit card, an old gift card, you know the drill. And really burnish that down. And that way, if there's any bubbles in there, they're going to, going to come out. There's our fabric tape, but this you could use it this wide if you want to. But I'm likely to want it a little bit, um, a, a little bit more narrow. So let me grab my quilting ruler here, and my rotary cutter. And why don't I cut? This is two inches wide, obviously. Why don't I cut? a piece that's about three quarters wide. Wait, no. Go like that. I don't quilt a whole lot anymore, but boy, I sure would never part with my, with my rulers, that's for sure. Be extremely careful if you have one of these, just be careful. I have, I, I have a scar in my finger that, <laughs> that will be evidence uh, for how careful you need to be using a rotary cutter. And all I'm doing with this is just lining up these little marks on the edge of my fabric. Obviously, if you wanted to just use or freehand it, you could absolutely do it. Okay, here's a three quarter inch piece of fabric tape. Let's set this aside and let's do a couple more. Should we do that? Um, I kind of liked this piece of ticking. And if I didn't want to cut it into a two inch width first, I would just use my whole width of fabric. I would put the tape down on it and then I would trim off the excess. But uh, because it's so easy to cut it to width with my, oh look, it's terrible, um, with my rotary cutter. I just went ahead and cut two inch strips. And truth be told, I have a fair amount of two inch strips in my stash anyway, because I have used those as a quilter. Quilters typically use two and a half inch strips most frequently, but you know, there's a there's a two inch strip or two in our our stash. If we're quilters, I can almost guarantee it. A little bit of that adhesive kind of came out on this side, so I'm gonna cut that here. I'm just gonna make a few more, and um, oh, these are just so cute. Here is a a piece of plaid. Isn't that cute? Won't this be pretty in a journal? I'll even bring you in a little closer if you'd like. There is, I did notice when this arrived from Amazon that um, it did have a pretty strong odor. It doesn't seem to have much of an odor now, but uh, if, you, if you get a headache easily from, uh, from smells of adhesives, I would recommend Opening this outdoors to this fabric is a little bit tricky. It's not as closely woven. Not as closely woven as the culture's cotton. This is a, yeah, so I've got this, the, the tape is showing a little bit over the edge. Let me do this one more time. So I'm not certain how good this is going to go. This actually wasn't a quilter's cotton. I think I made my little grandson Barney some shorts out of this when he was maybe two or three. I don't make his clothes anymore because he's gotten more particular. Um, what do I want to make? But I do have scraps of some of his uh, the things that he that he wore when he was a younger lad. All right, let me make. I think I'm going to make a couple more. Don't make the mistake I almost did and apply the double-sided tape to the 
the nice looking side of this fabric, I want to put it on the wrong side, on the back side. And just holding it over there, you know, there's no, there's no science to it other than just being careful and kind of taking your time. And let's do one more. Um, this is a cute, a cute print that has like little postcard things on it and vacation-y looking lighthouses. Truthfully, I probably should have turned this up before I got into the stickiness of handling the double-sided tape. And you can pull it a little bit taut, but you don't want to stretch that fabric too much. Oh, this is so fun. This is super fun. Now we're gonna have an even more fun task because we are going to see how we can apply this fabric tape. I'm gonna show you first this, the simplest thing we can do is, let me pull you out. There we go. Um, the simplest thing we can do is just take a journal page, just a blank folded sheet, and just use it on an edge. And this looks really cute, but how cute is it if we put a pocket and a tag on it? Now, I, I'm going to show you. This is from a fly leaf of an old book. Here is this pocket and tag, and this is how it looks on just a plain sheet, a plain page. So that looks plenty cute as it is, but look how cute it looks, because cute is what we're going for, on a page that has a little bit of this fabric on the edge. And look, I use the same fabric, a scrap of that, in the topper of the tag. So that's the, 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 the easiest way to use this fabric uh, tape once it's cut down a little bit. But let's look, let's look at some other ways. What if we, What if we wanted to put, put some on the edge of a pocket? I have this kind of side pocket that would look really cute on a journal page, but it's a, li it's a little bit dull. Is there anything here that would look great on this? Hmm. Would this cherry look good? No, I don't think so. What about the plaid? No, the plaid's a little too contemporary. Maybe this ticking. I think I might like this ticking. So I'd like to put a strip here and a strip here. So I'm gonna cut it pretty narrow. Uh, let's trim this, trim that down so that the that the um, edge of the double-sided tape is matching the edge of the ticking. And let's cut it down, let's cut it down to a half an inch because I haven't been, <laughs> I haven't used these rulers in a while, so I'm tending to forget the most convenient way to get them lined up. But, I think, hmm. I think I'm gonna go this way. This line here is gonna indicate my half inch. I think I'm gonna go just a little bit wider than a half inch. I'm gonna bring, bring that in. Speaking of bringing in, you might wanna see this very, a little bit closer. Be long enough, yes. Be long enough. I'll bring this all the way down. 
and I'm going to slice that off and I'm going to make another piece the same width. really has been ages since I've made a quilt. Although I do, I'll probably always identify as a quilter, a quilter and a card maker and a journal maker. So I think there's room for us to do all the crafts if we choose to do so, even if we're not actively doing them. They are still in us. So how do we think this looks? Yeah, I think that'd be a cute, cute pocket. Now, I'm gonna share with you the other really good tip that Connie gave me. And she said to release the backing, score it with a pin or a needle. And so I have my heavy darning needle here and I'm just gonna do kind of a rip there. And that makes it really easy to pull this backing off. Okay, I'm gonna open up, this is just a little pocket that I took a standard sheet of paper and folded it in a couple of times, folded it over one other time and I, <laughs> we have a, Maybe I'll do it. Maybe I'll do it just on this on this one first. Get over it. I'm probably getting kind of low on the page, but there we go. I let the edge of that paper with that inked edge show just a little bit over. And you can see that this is something that we use just like we would use washi tape. Now, it's really sticky. So you have to be, you know, when it goes, when it goes down, it's pretty much going to stay down. I might be okay with just that one. That one edge that double pocket. I, I, I think I'm not going to gild the lily. I think I'm going to use this just like it is. And I think that would be super cute on, um, on a book page. Here's, yes, it does not need that second piece of, um, of fabric tape. I think that looks really cute. Let's look at another kind of pocket. I think I had some over here. Oh, it's right here. This is just a little uh, um, um, dictionary page pocket that I did, as simple uh, as simple as you can get. But it's hard to see this pocket. Normally, I would, you know, I would have probably inked this. But we're going to define the edge of that pocket uh, with some of our fabric tape. So we've used this already. Uh, maybe we'll use. Let's use some of our little boy shorts fabric here. And I'm going to go three quarters of an inch in. And I'm going to come down and do the rest of that strip three quarters of an inch. Again, if you're not a quilter and you don't have a quilter's ruler, please do not go out and get quilter's rulers. You can just measure or not measure and cut on a pencil line or, you know, make a little, you know, have a little pen mark on the back or something and cut along that line. It's not necessary to have the quilter's equipment. I just have it. And uh, yeah, okay, I think I am going to like the double, the double row here. So let's 
Now, what did I do with my pen, my needle? A pin or a needle? Remember, Connie says, score the back. And I always do what Connie says, and I think you should too, because she is the best. There we go. Let's get this little piece of plaid here, and that's going to tell us. But that's the edge of a pocket there. We could cut it on the edge, but I'm just gonna fold it over. This stuff is really nice and flat. Oh, I'm loving this so much. Connie, 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 thank you for this wonderful idea. She said she saw it somewhere else, but do you know what? I love Connie so much. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pretend that Connie just invented this whole thing, and you should too. So let's just we're just gonna call this Connie's fabric tape. There we go. And how nice to make a decorative strip like that. That like this, just out of, you know, out of ordinary fabric, you know, out of an old pillowcase or, you know, scrap fabric in your, in your closet or, or your neighbor's, your neighbor's cabinet. Believe me, they will be very happy to send it to you, even if they don't live nearby. You know, you have a sister-in-law that lives, you know, six states away who quilts text her and say, do you have any scraps that I can have? And I just, you know, I guess I can't absolutely guarantee that she will send them to you, but I'm pretty sure that she would. Here is another cute little pocket. Isn't that cute? How would that look on a page? Oh, yes. Yes, I love that. Let's look at another idea. I was thinking about adding this, an envelope like this, into another journal. And this is the journal that we made. Whoops, where did my needle? This was the journal we made the other day, my garden notebook. And I want to keep some of the decorations for when, you know, when I'm ready to decorate. I want to keep some of the decorations in here, but I'd like to, um, so I made this envelope, but I just took a regular envelope and, um, and lined it uh, with book page. You know, some, I've heard crafters say that they, they kind of dread making lined envelopes because it's hard to get this part done. If you, this is a complete aside, but if you'd like to to see how I make lined envelopes, if that's useful at all to you, let me know and uh, we'll do it together. Um, but what I thought I would do is I thought I would put this envelope in here um, with, a, with a hinge. Am I a little bit close? I'm a little bit close. Sorry about that. Um, I thought I would uh, just affix to the envelope here with a hinge and then I can go, oh, look, here's all my little decorations that I can add in there as I'm, because I don't know yet exactly how many pages I'm going to be writing on and which ones I want to embellish and you know how much I want to embellish. So I thought that I would just affix this with a hinge. So why don't... I do that now, and I'm going to use our fabric tape, and I think I'm going to use this. Yeah, I think I'm going to use this. I'm going to cut this just a little bit wider. All of my stuff is every which where, but this one I'm going to cut... I think maybe about an inch and a half wide. There we go. I've never actually used this as a hinge before, but I, I think it's time we tried, don't you? Let's 
see, I kind of hate to cover up that little edge, but I put journaling space on the back of this envelope and I just kind of like the idea of it flipping out. Uh, where shall I put it? I think I'll, uh, there's our Ursula Le Guin quote. Thanks, Ursula. Yeah, I think I'm gonna put it here. And it's gonna go over, that tape can go over the edge of this page. I'll weight this down. There we go. And let me cut it down to the right length. This, this adhesive is pretty heavy duty uh, in here. So, you know, your, 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 it's my needle. Your scissors might get a little gummed up. Um, the, the, the brand that Connie used, the Ultimate Craft Die Cut and Bond, that is something that's specifically used for people um, uh, who, who use this technique for, for die cutting, die cutting fabrics and, and wanting a, uh, a, a double-sided tape for easy adherence of die cuts. I will be honest, I tried, well, I'm always honest with you, but I tried doing some die cuts uh, with this double-sided tape on this fabric and it just, it didn't go very well. So I think that's not going to be something that I'm going to uh, that I'm going to advocate. But if you, you know, use a different, you know, a different kind of fabric or have a different kind of die cutting machine, you know, give it a try. It might, it might work for you. But um, there we go. All right. Now let's see how this hinge will work. Fingers crossed. I've got that pretty much lined up there and it's going to be there and I'm going to fold this over so it's going to make a decorative piece on this side of the page as well. If it was a slightly smaller envelope it could just adhere on the flat surface of the page. Now I've got a little flip out. Look at that. And I've got some of my decorations right over here, as luck would have it. Um, and I'm going to open up my, yeah, now see there's a little bit of stickiness that's coming through there. And I'm not crazy about that, but I have an idea. Um, let me go ahead and load this up just because I want you to see what this is being used for. There we go. I'll probably add more things in there. but So this is a little bit sticky here. What about if we put another piece of fabric on there that faced the sticky part? And yeah, let's try that. And so the stickiness is facing itself. Oh, a silly person. Just use this. There we go. And that's gonna cover up the stickiness that's exposed. Plus I kind of like the look of that. Okay, yes, Connie, we're scoring the back. We are doing what we must, what we should, what we are. Yeah, that the the odor on the adhesive is not nearly as bad now that it's been out of the package a few uh 
a few hours. But if you're a person who's really sensitive to, um, to smells, I just want to give you a heads up on that. There we go. Now, alternatively, you could go in with like a little, you know, cornstarch or baby powder or something like that, and that'll take the sticky out. But I kind of like having another piece of our fabric tape in there. And here's that little flip out. I can do a little bit of journaling. Oh, I'm ready to do some decorating elsewhere in the journal. No need to hunt for all the supplies. They're all right in here. Yep, I'm feeling good about that. Um, I, I, you know what? I think that almost, it, it almost does it for, uh, for the tape. I have this cute little, uh, cute little tag that has this. And I think this looks great actually as it is, but would it look even better if I had just a little bit of fabric take the tape there to decorate it? I think it would. I think it would. And this is some of the original stuff that Connie sent me. So I would like to use that. And I'm going to cut just a tiny little sliver. Like it was almost like it was a really narrow little piece of, of washi tape. So this is only going to be a quarter of an inch wide. According to my plan. It, to me, because it's stronger than washi tape, you know, it can make a good hinge uh, like we just saw. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm liking it. There's no glue. Here, I'm going to cut off just a little bit because I can use, I can use this for something else. And there's that scored bit. Lots of little bits and pieces I can, I'll be able to pick up this afternoon in my cleanup session. All right, right down the middle of this little blank space. And I, <laughs> I love that. I think that just finishes that off, doesn't it? It does. Oh, gee. I'm going to put this needle away before I forget because needles can lose themselves. Here's our fabric tape, friends. Just enjoy making this and, um, you know, use whatever tools you have that makes sense for you. But, um, but it's just, it just is a really, really fun way to add beauty to the edge of a page. Uh, you know, bring a cohesive look together, uh, you know, make a hinge. You probably, you probably are, sit, are, are watching this thinking, oh, there's a million different things I could use uh, this fabric tape for. So let me know in the comments. Let me know what you're going to use it for. Just have fun with it. And let's all thank my beautiful friend, Connie, for giving us such wonderful um, inspiration. Thanks, Connie. And we'll see you all later.